Ja, los hier. Ik heb toch niet die was erbij. Ja? Ik heb in de mest van La Française. Dat is niet toppen, hè? Ja, kijk. Dat is een minuut, dus ja, zijn weg. Ja, zijn hier. Ja. Ik zie man op kop, er ruimt heel een boel. Zijn weg, hè? Dat is weer een timmer, zijn op kop. We hebben daar een Riblin. Riblin. Freira. Elitski. Uh, Hier van Verre. Van Verre, ja. got six riders like this when you've got a whole peloton bearing down under speed you just have to get caught out racing in the low countries just plain dangerous at times yes well certainly you know this one uh, um, racing holland uh, you know it's 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 really dangerous and uh, there's so many we see the, uh, the the real situation there just a little small items in the middle of the road and if you're behind a, a, a number of riders you only have 15 or 20 riders but if you sit in the rear of that and you just take your eye off the off the front at the moment and you know the other riders they split they go around Left and right, and you can. Ik vraag er nou niet even one of these races where it's, it's, a, it's a much more risky race. I, I always looked at this race as being as dangerous as Paris-Roubaix. Really? Well, that's uh, 
straight from the horse's mouth. You can see the sort of thing we mean. This is Dutch racing. You've watched the Eneco tour, by the way, uh, which go. <laughs> Gezelschap van Nicky Terpstra. Hij heeft een Zwitser bij zich en nog een Nederlander. Daar is Timmer. We hebben Bertok Liatti. We hebben Klimov en we hebben Bosic, als ik het goed heb. Vakantie leider. Dus Bosic, ja. Dit is de kopgroep van 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ik denk ook de andere bak. Ja, Rabo. Ja. Maar wel zelf gaan we even verder hier. Kirienka. Daar is het lekker. Deze. En dan natuurlijk. Daar de Wiegman. Allemaal te samen weer, hè? Hoe uh, roep ik, hè? Ben goed. Dan gaan we gaan de, de laatste minuten meemaken van uh, de, deze mannen aan de leiding. Is echt, die heeft een metamorfose ondergaan. Hij was nog mijn ploegleider bij Raas en uh, deed daar zijn ding. Nou, hij ik is heb, nu ik zo heb, fanatiek. Ik heb gehoord dat hij Napoleon nog heeft. Typisch zo'n klein smal wegeltje. Je komt van hem. Wat daar.
So oh, crashes are, you know, a very familiar thing. It is just so many men going through the towns, especially with the uh, the flow pots in the middle of the road. And here, once again, it's the same situation. Oh no, this is bad already. That looks like Schleck. Oh no, it's Frank Schleck. Well, a drama immediately He's wrapped around his bike. The man who won this race back in 2006 was second last year. Frank Schleck. We well, didn't expect that to come live on air and see one of the really big favourites on the road. He's collided with one of the boys from uh, Ceylon Lotto, I think, or at least they've all been involved in the same crash. That is a disaster. I don't think he's getting up from that. They've got the medical out. They've got a neck brace on. That's the end of one of the big favourites races already. Now, I, I wondered if that was Gilbert's stuff, but it's too big. Uh, oh, no. And he's already had a lot of mechanicals as well. I think it's Staff Shearlink's on the floor, actually. Lloyd. It's not, is it Lloyd? I can't see the I can't see the Australian bands around the end of the sleeve for as a former Australian champion, but that is Frank Schick. That's a disaster, Sean. Yes, certainly is. And, uh, you know, they talked about there, uh, we heard uh, Decker talk, and he's talked about the last 40 kilometres. Uh, there's no, yes, Matthew Light uh, is the one from the No, it is, yeah. Um, he talked about it, uh, Decker, you know, the last 40 kilometres. But you cannot just relax in this race. It is impossible. From, you know, the uh, from the, the start, from the zero kilometre, you have to be just all the time on the watch. And you cannot sit in the rear. You have to stay up in the top, the top 30 or 40 rides. That's there's so, much, so many obstacles in this race. You know, ramps always turning left and right. And as you go through the videos as I mentioned, and you know, this is uh, it's unbelievable that you know we see one of the big favors getting cut out, but even up front, it can be you know, it can happen so easy, so easily. And it's impossible for you know the, the race organizers to guard every island because to put a man on all of them would be just totally impossible. And uh, it's just a race where you have to really, you know, con Oscar Ferreira. Oh, we'll take a short break, and we'll be back with the 44th Amstel Gold shortly. Welcome back. There is a group uh, containing Oscar Ferreira, really kick-started by him and a couple of other riders. This is the group you're looking at here. Albacini, Martin Brut, Ivanov, Fanberger, Larchon, Solari, Decourt, Hergeland. Uh, that's the back end of the graphic, I think. Anyway, Matt Lloyd riding very well. Rode very well here last year, was in the leading group. Uh, if you remember, you were reminded me today, actually, I remember it now, Sean. He, he was in the flatter section as they come up to the end. He went straight on into a field, I think, uh, or just about into a field and missed a corner. Uh, but he rode very well last year. Very good climber, Matt Lloyd. And, of course, Frank Schleck targeting. This is one of the big races to win. Uh, well, this group's got a substantial gap over the peloton now. This has blown the race completely to pieces, as you would expect some of the big favourites to be up here. And there's some could-do-well names in here, people like Al Bassini. Uh, have made it into this group and uh, that's very surprising that they've got such a gap so quickly yes well of course uh, you know with the uh, with the problem with the crash i think uh, that was a bit of confusion and maybe a lot of uh, the teams as well uh, saxo bank having a look to see you know what's the problem which leg was he back on his bike but uh, uh, it's certainly uh, you know they don't uh, seem to be worried about that now because we see the saxo bank rider pulling on the front here uh, but i would i would certainly agree with you david that uh, it has to be on the front of the group because when you see matthew Lloyd and uh, schleck coming down they had to be in the front at that time and as i said you know you're never safe wherever you sit in the bunch but at least even the top 20 40 Royals, you still have you, you have a better chance of you know getting through without getting caught up in excellence. Nicky Terpstra from the breakaway is now going by himself because the others are coming up very very quickly. Terpstra, the last time we saw him was in I think the Madison. Was it the Madison? In the world. Uh, well, uh, he's been around a fair while now. Terpstra got a 17th in Paris-Roubaix last week. So uh, going well, he's in good form. 
But uh, he's, he's a little bit more of a, a Paris-Roubaix man than this race, I would have thought. Well, yes, going well in Paris-Roubaix, but he's a style of rider that can get through this one well. Newton B, it would not be a big space, just uh, suffer a bit maybe in the final climbs. Uh, but, uh, you know, riding strong, as I said, a very good performance in Paris-Roubaix, but uh, uh, he's around a while, but haven't really learned the tactics of biking because, mm. you know, he's, his tactics are certainly not the best. Uh, in the situation here, you know there's a group going to come up, uh, you're in, in the front, and you're going to find yourself in the leading group. If I was director of sport if I was in Tepsis situation, I would just hold on, wait until the group come up and see in the final, because to go here alone is just far, far too out. Yeah. This is the uh, remnants of the original breakaway group, has been caught by the Oscar Freire, a little tiny breakaway group, and they've got a little bit of a gap. He's concerned to push the pace on Freire here. Now, what, what is the tactic here, uh, Sean? I mean, is Freire, can he see an opportunity for himself? He keeps looking over his shoulder to see where, where other people are. Uh, but he's certainly got some strength. Maybe not for the finish, but uh, who's he working for? What's he doing? Well, that is the... Uh, Schleck. Schleck and uh, Lloyd both going off uh, to hospital almost immediately because it's in a very, very uh, difficult uh, situation for them. It looks like Pinotti, who's just gone past, uh, very often, uh, Sean. Any particular reason for that? Well, of course, uh, in the uh, in the 80s, the Tour of Spain was at this moment, so uh, I was competing in the Tour of Spain because of the sponsors being a lot of the years uh, Spanish ones, so uh, it clashed with the uh, with the Tour of Spain, and uh, I think during my career, I might have ridden four or five times in this one, and, uh, you know, as I said, it wasn't the one that... Uh, 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 that I that I missed uh, because certainly you know the style it was a style of race it was uh, a very very difficult race and uh, in those days well cars parked on the roadside I think they have overcome that situation we don't see many cars on the road but in the mid 80s certainly uh, it was always a problem you get a lot of parked cars and as you know in a big bunch you had to slow down and then speed up again and that made the race very difficult because you lose your rhythm and you're all the time trying to get back into the rhythm again and certainly if you if you try to relax and sit back in a hundred hundred fifty position wheels is he using that like uh, color-coded lightweights to me. No matter how flash your wheels up, if you go at the wrong time, you're never going to stay away. There's Tim Ike just about to be taken back by the rest of the peloton, slowly, slowly sliding backwards. And Ryder Heisdahl going well. Here he is, just going past him there. Who is up the road, though? I would guess it's Agnoli and uh, Oscar Freire. Well, he's riding particularly well, Freire. It is an, he's an incredible rider. He does seem to be able to just come back from injury from nowhere, really. He also has a very upright position, or a very short top tube position on his bike. His, uh, when you see him in the saddle, his shoulders down to his wrist. It's almost a straight line, Sean, isn't it? He doesn't uh, get stretched down the bike at all. No, certainly does not. And uh, it's it's, uh, it's quite amazing that he come back because uh, you know anybody that rides bike, uh, pretty compelled, you know, if you get uh, injured, if you break a bone, break a collarbone. A terrible accident from Frank Schleck and Matt Lloyd. We didn't see the accident, of course, but we've seen the consequences. They were on the deck for a long, long time. Thanks already. Things coming in on. Uh, cycling.eurosport at yahoo.com Alex Taylor glad to know you're back on the turbo trainer again we wished him uh, well during the Tour of Flanders I think it was was it Paribas I can't remember you'd smashed his Tour of Flanders you'd uh, smashed your leg up uh, went out on the training ride. Glad to see you back today. Uh, it's certainly, you know, uh, it is quite dangerous uh, because they can stand out on the road. And they do not realise when you're, uh, when you have a number of drinks on board, you do not realise how, how, you know. How
calls in uh, to uh, direct us to see if we can get anything back. We haven't got any other information than that. Uh, thanks for joining us if you are live. Lee, I'm glad you got home to turn the uh, computer on and get us a live feed. I know you've been on the train all the way back. They suck, don't they? Train journeys. Anyway, uh, I'm glad you're back for following us live. Rodriguez type of race, I would imagine. I don't know. First time we've seen Alejandro Valverde on our roads. Liege, Baston Liege would be more his cup of tea, I would think, maybe next weekend. Who knows? Different type of rider, though, from the couple classics we've seen in the previous week. And uh, he's at the front of the moment. So the guys we saw featuring in the couple classics last week, uh, some of them are here, some of them aren't. There is uh, Chavanel. Now, Sylvain Chavanel, I wonder what he could do today. Jan von Sumeren, so unlucky in Paris-Roubaix last weekend. There he is, just lurking in the background. And Silon Slotto colors the back. big leaders uh, uh, certainly uh, it's a different situation he, he'll be able to you know ride his own race and that is very important and I think we will see more of that uh, through this year where he'll have to you know pr produce the performance himself and sometimes like the team is maybe built around him and that you know pushes him on a bit so uh, if he's got it I think this year's a year we should see it yeah he's been targeting this one I'm hoping he'll do something I like Fabian Wegman he's one of the guys who wears his uh, heart in his sleeve when it comes to racing when he's in pain, you really know he's in pain, Fabian Wegman. Oh dear, I seem to have started something on the subject of mullets, unfortunately. Mulleteers, says uh, Patrick Warren, could do far worse than cast an eye over Vladimir Carpets for styling tips. Uh, either that or dig out some old photos of those Scouse Fleetwood brothers, particularly Les. We like a bit of mullet, I think it's uh, safe to say. Dario Cataldo is the rider from Quick Step on the left. He's got Ferrer in the wheel. Chris Ancasar, or was? Uh, yes, well, uh, was, I think, would be the word. They've certainly you know, lost one of their key men, and uh, but still, you know, there's a lot of riders in there as you went through them. Uh, definitely, uh, I think, uh, still maybe the strongest team. Silan Salot was the other one, of course. And we haven't seen, you know, the likes of Gilbert and uh, Evans, but, uh, you know, uh, also. Uh, uh, Cunego, yes, you know, we talked about him, but we haven't seen him at all, and that is uh, that is a good thing. If he can, you know, get through this race and get as far as awful. He did. Uh, I spoke to him midweek last week. He said I had a really bad day on the bike. Uh, well, I'm not quite sure why. But I did nothing in my legs at all. Uh, I hope it's just a one-off. But uh, he has come down with a temperature. Had a temperature last night. Sweating buckets apparently. Just simply wasn't uh, well this morning, and uh, didn't get any sleep. Uh, still got the high temperature, so we wish you well, Dan. And you're probably watching this as, as we're speaking. Uh, you're watching our colleague Danny Nellison uh, in the Netherlands. But uh, we hope you get better. And this is just the delayed pictures of another crash uh, while we were away. Uh, everybody seeming to get up uh, at the moment. Uh, just extricating themselves from the bottom everybody up thankfully one rider from Vakal Salel on the far right hand side by the look of it Bocci yeah Bocci's got up and uh, away but the Vakal Salel rider looks like he's uh, whacked himself on the chin by the look of it or broken a nose maybe ouch 
Oh no. It is a difficult race, and you can imagine as a rider as well, it's a, it's a difficult situation out at the moment because of that breakaway and then you know, a number of riders. And they're going away in, in ones and they're joining up and they get an advantage of 10 or 15 seconds. Uh, so it's uh, it's certainly difficult, uh, you know. Everybody just pile up on top of each other, and you have 20 or 25 guys uh, in a pile up there. So, uh, a, a big advantage, a great thing. This is dry conditions and good weather today. Great name, Gulperberg. Good for a beer sponsored race, I think. Uh, this is pretty nasty, actually. This is. Congratulations, Luke. I hope you're enjoying uh, Amstel Gold afterwards. We've just seen that there's a chasing group of three riders being pulled in here uh, on the on the climb, and uh, it looked like Rogers was one mm. of the uh, three out front. Uh, so certainly uh, the Columbia riders are, you know, uh, very interested in trying breaking up this yeah, one. Absolutely. Cert certainly not waiting back and holding for the final. And as it goes, when you look at the list of riders they have. They're not the top, top favourites, but still, you know, they can win this race if they go from a bit further out and get away in a smaller group. This looks like uh, Botcherov going over the top with Brut, I think, uh, Pavel Brut in his wheel. It looks like Brut, and that is definitely Botcherov who's involved in the uh, crash earlier. James Knight saying, why doesn't Cadell Evans ride these classics? He does, he's in here. He's in this race, and he, did he launched a bit of an attack last year and didn't quite make it. All these guys try, and of course the driver skill as well. Uh, Gasparotto, Kreuzinger, Devenins, Rogers, Schle Andy Schleck, and Carrera in here. Well, uh, Andy Schleck, there he is in the Saxo Bank uh, colours, has will be well aware over the radio that his brother Frank has been involved in an accident. I mean, maybe it'll spur him on, who knows? But uh, certainly some people, including Helen, on the on Twitter, in fact, it was saying that I'm not sure that it won't affect his mental state, but I think he's a little bit stronger than that, which we'll just have to see. Kreuzinger, well, he could do something today if he could stay up there. There is Carrera. Uh, Gasparotto, sorry. I'm just trying to work out who it is, in fact. I think it might be uh, Paul Martins. Looking over the shoulder, I'd be very surprised if it was. Uh, We've still got Andy Schleck in second spot. Then Gasparotto, I think, still lying in third there. So went up that hill pretty well. This is the Eisebosweg. This is the one that uh, uh, everybody thinks is the best place to attack. It's just about far, and out, uh, far enough out from the finish. It's just about uh, shallow enough to really power up if you want to. And it's just about long enough to string things out. If you're going to make an attack, this is where to make it. This is where Michael Bogart made all his attacks when he could. It looks like Rodriguez coming on the far right-hand side uh, for uh, the Case de Pan squad. Just keeping out of the way of everybody at the moment. This is where you need to be up at the front, Sean. 
Yes, well, certainly it's uh, it's a place to be in the top 10, 15, any further, you know, you're going to maybe have to uh, uh, do some chasing. If there's an attack here and somebody leaves the wheel go and there's a split of, you know, five, 10 bike lengths uh, to close it down at, the, at this at this moment in the race when they really go at, you know, full power, uh, it just takes so much energy. And unless you're really, really strong, you can do that. But uh, certainly the top 10, 15, no further out. Just controlling the pace on the front. I've got a feeling that they, they reckon Ferrer can do something. They'll go, Jessing can do something towards the end. Jessing lying about 10th back there in the middle. Sergei Ivanov is up here as well for Katusha wearing the uh, Russian champion's jersey. And there are a number of riders. Just look, Kunigo, you could just see on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Just keeping out of trouble. He's on the wheel of Rodriguez from the... Uh, from a case to pass. Simon Gerens is the rider from Cervelo on the left hand side with the pink and blue of uh, Enrico Gasparotto just ahead of him. It is Martins, the Rabobank rider on the front. Even off is the far right hand side. Katusha colors. Very difficult to spot actually. She's the rider. <laughs> in their legs and you know the small hills and uh, you know the, uh, the, the, the just the, the pressure all the time the mental pressure here as we talked about earlier on it also pays in the end so a lot of riders really suffering as we can see here and uh, you know the liquid the uh, the rider the italian rider keeping it going on the front there and uh, <laughs> and in love with cycling already, uh, which is great. And I'm glad you're enjoying here at Amstel Gold as they get another big attack uh, from uh, Kreuzinger, trying to push some, some distance into the other riders. This is the area of the race, remember, last year where Matt Lloyd, sadly out of the race now, went off the road. Uh, back to Morgan Wilson's little email saying, is there a, a women's version of Amstel Gold and are there big ladies, la ladies races around the world? Yes, there's a Ladies World Cup 
Uh, and uh, there are a whole load of races around the world. There's a Tour of Flanders, which goes on the same day as the Men's Tour of Flanders. The big one this weekend was won by uh, uh, Ina Teutenberg, and it was the Ronde van Gelderland, which is uh, was yesterday around this area. So uh, they've had their races yesterday. It was won by Ina Teutenberg, and uh, she's already won 10. Well, she had already won 10 races this season, so... Uh, She's doing pretty well. So enjoy the cycling, Morgan. I keep watching. We don't see many uh, Astana riders up towards the front. Not such a great team, really. Bazaev, uh, Dalachenko, Jesus uh, Hernandez, uh, Beric uh, Kapufer, uh, uh, Kapushov, Maxim Glinski, Dmitry Muriev, and uh, Benjamin Noval. They've got bigger fish to fry now that uh, Lance Armstrong has been confirmed as riding in the Giro d'Italia this year. So uh, it seems that he is going to be riding, Sean. What is he going to be making to the Tour de France after all? Or do you think will that's to be the last Grand Tour we see of him? No, I think certainly uh, we could see him in the Tour of France. Uh, and Nubili wasn't prepared to just you know, take up a little bit of the pulling. Uh, so they're going to play that card of cruising for the moment. And Nubili maybe certainly wait for the finish and uh, see what he could do in these final kilometers because if you go out there in front and you ride uh, for a 10 or 15 kilometers then you're going to you know uh, pay for that the finish you're not going to be contested with the big guys and uh, that seemed to be the tactic of liquid gas search poles left hand side pushing the pace on for Cervelo with uh, Sergei Ivanov in there trying to string things out and now the Belgian uh, Nibali already suffering as Ivanov looks very strong. He's latched onto per Pauls very quickly. Pauls had a very good early start to the season. Incidentally, if my uh, son Joseph is watching, as he uh, he said he would be, he's been out for the, every day for the last two weeks, bar two days with his grandmother, which was uh, he's given me a kick in for two weeks. This, by the way, is uh, less of a percentage, Joseph, than we were going up uh, this week. So uh, there's hope yet. I think that's Pauls, it's not Garens. No, it's Pauls. On the left-hand side of the road, just pushing away. This is really, really mixing up. Philippe Gilbert digging hard to stay in there. Up towards the top of the uh, Kreidenberg. Now, just the one climb to come on the finish at the Coburg. And that's really, really strung him out now. That's made a lot of people suffer. And Samuel Sanchez, they're going through. No, it's Ruben Perez going through. All four. Just look for the biggest. Gasparotto just goes past. Uh, I think Fanberg has just gone through. There is Rebalin. He's a long way down here. Trying to hang in there, but David Rebalin, a winner here in 2004. Sastra. There's Sastra. Carlos Sastra trying to climb through here at the moment. Where is Damiano Cunago and Valverde? We've not seen them go through. Well, that was a big attack. Andy Schleck gets back onto the front again. Keep the pace high. Keep attacking. Keep uh, shedding riders here. Uh, Gilbert tried to get onto his wheel, and Gerens is now up there. I tell you, I'm impressed by uh, the way even offers it. And that's Fanberger, Christian Fanberger, fourth spot. Uh, the Austrian riding for Katusha now. Now, Fanberger was in the lead group last year as well. When riding for Barlow World, that's done some damage, Sean. Yes, it's certainly uh, really starting to suffer, and uh, a lot of the favourites, you know, anybody that's uh, you know running out of gas, are going to get caught out here, and we see a number of uh, you know quite big names, and uh, it's uh, certainly you know the time now where uh, they have to keep you know the uh, the pressure on, and we see Andy Schleck there really trying to keep uh, pushing it on, and he needs that. He needs to make the race difficult at the end to have a chance in the sprint. More pressure coming on. Yeah. Well, that's a bit of a way out for Shisink, I would think. He must feel confident at the moment, right at the back. Well, of course, Jessing, I think uh, if he comes to the sprint with the group uh, we see him with there, he's going to have difficulty doing anything in the sprint because he is the weaker one. And, uh, you know, to have a go here, uh, possibly the, you know, the big favours could just start looking at each other. But it is, you know, a big, uh, a big ass to hold off from this far out. Especially with a big group of uh, such good riders behind Fanberg. Uh uh, who's riding particularly well. I'm, I'm surprised that uh, Rebelin has missed this this break here. Unless he's tacked onto the back, there is Fanberg, the Austrian champion, with the blue shorts, white shirt, red uh, sort of squiggly band in the middle. Uh, again, that skyline. 
looking out there. Uh, Gerens is in this group uh, in the all black of Cervelo. The uh, Francis de Jure rider looks like Benoit Vaugrenard uh, at the back. And Jacinque, well, he's dug in, he's committed himself completely now. He's got to go for the bottom of uh, you know, not able to just react immediately and uh, it is certainly, you know, a, a good time to do it when you have everybody really on the limit. Well, now they're beginning to react. On his leg. On his leg and... Uh... Left it a little bit too late, some of these guys. Jessic at Ivanov. I think it is Andy Schleck, you know, at the front hit. I haven't got a good view of him yet. It looks too small for him, to be honest. It looks far too short. All right, I take it back. Jacinque. And Ivanov, Ivanov has impressed me so far in this uh, race. Sean, he's been there. Ekrun, should have guessed that, really. That's a bit daft. Sorry, our apologies for that. It happens sometimes. You get a memory blank, complete memory blank as to who people are. I impressive by Ivanov so far. He's definitely in good shape. Yes, well, certainly uh, he's been very active and, you know, going in the attack alone. And uh, when you do that, uh, go out front just for a small number of kilometres and, you know, get pulled back. Uh, it's major difficult to stay up with the big guys. And, you know, we, we see him there on that very steep hill, very steep climb. He was, you know, uh, still able to stay to the fore and, you know, going the attack just afterwards. So he's uh, certainly, you know... Uh maar een echt grote klassieker? Nee, dat nog niet. Robert Geesink, ja, die staat aan die grote poort te kloppen eigenlijk, hè. But these three with eight kilometers to go look like they're in good shape at the moment. Uh, There's going to have to work very hard to get across to these three now. Good move by Jessink. And the strong man, Sergei Ivanov, looking like he can make it across, uh, and did so. And has taken with him Karsten Kruin. Well, uh, we've still got the climb of the Coburg to go. They haven't got too much of a gap, and there's still time for it to come back together, Sean. But it's difficult terrain to do so. Yes, it is difficult, and uh, I think everybody is, you know, is feeling the effects of this one. And, uh, you know, the distance, first of all, uh, the race, you know, very... <laughs> A lot of basic A lot of uh, climbs, uh, you know, very coming very quickly after each other, and it's just paying the price. And uh, who's going to do the chasing here? Unless there's a team who has got maybe two or three riders, and I don't think there's anybody have got that. Well, then it's going to be majorly difficult uh, for anybody just to take it up. Because if you do take it up, you're going to pay the price in the end, and you, you know they're all going to be calculating in that way. So unless we can see a team here with, you know, one or two riders who can really ride hard for a leader, and Lotto, as I was going to say, here we see Van Summer once again. Uh, 
at taking it up and that, that you know this is the only possibility as I say and Lotto have two men here at the moment uh, so it looks you know it looks good for the uh, Gilbert um, and he seems to be very active and of course Gilbert if it comes to a sprint he is the one I think who has the better sprint but you know Valverde is still in and we can see him on the right hand side of a pitcher and uh, it's uh, you know it's all to play for a lot of the you know a lot of the big favourites still in there and as we mentioned earlier this uphill sprint I think it will suit a lot more people. Yeah, I wonder if they... ...de Dekselse Kouwberg met Kassen Kroon, Robert Geesing en Sergei Ivanov. Heel, heel grappig vanochtend bij de start. Hier van Kalster, heel vaak onze motaar bij VRT Radio. Ex-ploegleider ook. Ex Scherling daar, Willans. As a domestic? Yes, well, certainly, you know, a super domestic, you can call him, and, uh, you know, they are very, 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 you know, far and few between. Uh, you, you know, you go a long ways to get five riders of that uh, style who can do the, you know, the, the Cobble Classic and also do the, the Hilliard Classics, and he is certainly the one of the ones who can do it very well. And also on the Tour of France, he's there, you know, preparing the sprint for the sprinters in the, uh, in the final number 15, 20 kilometers. This is the 44th edition of Amstel Gold then. With Robert uh, Gessink from Rabobank, the man who launched the attack. He's got two men who've come across to him. Karsten Kroon of uh, the Saxa Bank squad. And the man in the middle is the Russian road race champion, Sergei Ivanov. He's the only man of these three to ever have had a podium here back in 2002. However, more significantly, he likes this area. He won the Tour of the Walloon region last year, Sergei Ivanov, so he's quite uh, happy to race on the, in these sort of conditions uh, in terms of uh, hills and so on. Although that's just over the border in Belgium, he's uh, got a track record in the east of the Low Countries, the east of Belgium and the west of uh, Holland. And looking very strong. Kroon is a bit of a wild card here. I'm not quite sure what sort of kick he's got up over the last uh, climb of the Coburg, but uh, you can never count him out. He's a very punchy rider. Yes, certainly is. And I think uh, he's, for me, the most dangerous one here. Uh, um, even off, of course, you know, very, very strong. But sometimes we see him in a bit, a bit too heavy gear. On the uh, on the final run up to the finish, you know, pulling his and uh, coming all back together. Our three men up and down over these uh, ins and outs and jiggles around towards the finish here. Uh, up the Coburg with Sergei Ivanov at the back. Second in 2002. We're in Valkenburg with three kilometers to go now. Jesink, the best climber out of these three. And they're really pushing it on behind Johan von Sommer and taking every chance to try and get back. There's a 15 second gap. Uh, Karsten Kroon for Sean's money is the most difficult uh, man to dislodge at the front. He's been a, uh, well, he's been a professional about 10 years. He won two big races in the first year of his career in fact and has done uh, it came in with a massive bang got a second in liege based on liege that particular year van summeren is worth his weight in gold in these sort of situations how close <laughs> Krun as the man who could cause the damage here. And Jessink is going to have to get onto that wheel as he doesn't want to. Ivanov says, well, I don't think I'll mess about goes straight onto the wheel of Karsten Kroon. This is the big hope for everybody behind Sean, isn't it? They'll start looking at each other. 
Yes, certainly. But uh, we see uh, Jessing uh, surprisingly starting to suffer here, and uh, I think you know the uh, the legs are just you know uh, really gone from him now. And uh, certainly, you know, uh, even off looks strong there. He just you know the that time trialing style, just you know powering back into the wheel of Crone once again. So, but uh, interesting one to see if they can really continue it on here because uh, you know the Lotto riders have been doing quite a lot, and you need somebody to take it up now in the last kilometre for uh, the Silence Lotos. And if they haven't got the legs, well then it's going to be difficult but still coming down only 10 seconds of an advantage 10 seconds yep yeah. yep yeah, 10 seconds and you can see all the big names just lurking behind uh, the lotto riders are really pushing on uh, Philippe Gilbert is the man they're working for he's uh, just nestled in there just uh, behind him is Alejandro Valverde uh, Andy Schleck is lying about fourth back in this group uh, in the group uh, chasing should we say and they're all just letting lotto do the work at the moment these are our three lead riders. Just think, looks over his shoulder, says, oh, they're just so close now. I don't think it's going to stay away because the Lotto boys are beginning to shut this right down. The uh, six seconds is now the gap. And that uh, excellent attack by Jessink is may come to nothing as Sergei Ivanov, who's looked strong all afternoon, he goes under the Flam Rouge, one kilometer to go then. This man who has uh, won the circuit of the Ardennes He's won the Tour of Wallonia last year. He's the national champion. Turns himself in towards the Cobra. Kroon has gone with him, but it looks like Jasinku's suffering. The big bell, the big Dutchman, who would love to do something. Oh, now they're looking at each other. They can't afford to do this. All the big favourites are now looking for a place rather than the win, surely. Yes, and the lot of riders have finished. Uh, as I said, you know, it was going to be the situation. They've just, you know, burned themselves out. And you can understand because they've done a huge amount of riding, uh, the two men, and uh, nobody really taking it up. And it's just going to play the advantage now to the uh, to the riders out in front. And even off looking very strong because he's the one who rolled it on uh, with Kroon taking it up at the moment. Carsten Kroon takes it up at the front. He's just going to keep going for the line as uh, Gessick keeps fighting 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 he's only 5.8 percent the rest of them are all just sitting in there behind they're all going to go for a place rather than a win fanberger on the left kolobnev is in there he's not going to do anything because he got cast and could up the road here comes Sergei Ivanov. Ivanov goes around the wheel of kroon <laughs> trying to keep him up against the barrier at the moment it's coming right up to the very finish this is where uh, Frank Schleck was pipped by Damiano Kunigo well he won't be able to react so quickly with that big gear if Kroon jumps him now and look at Jesse going up to them Jessic is trying to get back up to them as the two of them look at each other. Now they start. They get onto the flat a bit. Ivanov has got it. The bit between his teeth. Kroon is trying for it. Ivanov's got it. Ivanov has got this one. Sergei Ivanov converts second into a win. Seven years after he'd got his second place. Karsten Kroon has to go for second place. Third goes to Robert Gessink. A fourth to Gilbert. Fifth to Kunigo, I think. Sixth to Kolobnev. A Fanberger in ninth by the look of it. Uh, Samuel Sanchez misses out again on this race. Valverde misses out as well. There's Roman Koitzinger. Uh, there's Scarponi. Michele Scarponi has just come over the line looking like he's really suffered. But that was a terrific win for Sergei Ivanov. He looked uh, strong all day. And he just waited, 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 waited till that flat section, Sean, to kick hard because he certainly didn't have the, wasn't in the right gear to outsprit Kroon if it had been any steeper. No, certainly, but even if he was in a little bit of a heavier gear, a higher gear than uh, Krohn, but uh, had the power, and, uh, you know, he's had it in the, in the last 20, 25 kilometers we've seen him. He'd been so active, like he was, as I said, uh, you know, quite uh, impressive all day in the last 25 kilometers, uh, you know, going in the attack out front. Uh, he was storing it up a lot of the time, and uh, he was, you know, in that group, and he got cool, pulled back just on one of the hills, a very steep one. Uh, it was about, you know, the 15, 12, 15 kilometer mark, and still had to stay up there and go in the attack later. That tells us that he was was really on song today. Well, this sort of area has been a good hunting ground for Sergei Ivanov in the past. Uh, if I'm, I've got a feeling he's won stages in the uh, in the Tour of Netherlands. 